Okay, <laughs> never mind, but he deals 9 damage. He actually did not expect it at all. And that's that's pretty epic play. The fact that this is just, you know, by the way play, our deck is not even designed to do this. Hello everyone, it's Love here and welcome in New Year 23, if you are watching it on the day of the upload. Sorry for the late one, but you know, it's a special day, so we ain't leaving you hanging with no video, so it will always happen. And today's deck is absolutely glorious, you will love it, but honestly this deck is so much fun to play with and the results are really good. We won most of the games, it's just platinum, but I really feel this is an extremely powerful deck. So. Uh, we will go through the deck. Uh, this is basically a Sacrifice Rite of Oblivion deck. Card that does, doesn't really seem, a, seem to see a comeback right now in the standard, but I think this deck is strong enough that we need to consider it, because the rest of the deck is a fodder to Sacrifice, and we love Sacrificing because we get so much value. We have basically very small multiple creatures uh, for a single card and just a crown that gives you uh, a card whenever it dies, and then you just keep writing of Oblivion every show that you will see. And that's some point you might uh, also there's a super cool second plan for the deck but you know in a moment and we have things like braids first stinger and yeah of course right of oblivion so we have a lot of ways to sacrifice stuff with Sarah Paragon. As you can see, all of those cards are three mana or less permanent, so we get insane value out of, out of this Paragon. It is basically a seven drop because you nearly always have something in the graveyard. And basically, cards like Resort Reinforcements, uh, Spirited Companion are insanely good fodder. Your opponent, even if he has cards to remove all of this, he won't make those in time. 2 mana removal means he needs 4 mana to answer your 2 mana. And then you follow up with a ganjo, companions, like you overwhelm. A wedding announcement is 3 creatures basically. Imagine how many cards and how much mana he needs to answer this 3 drop. It just overwhelms your opponent and even if he has dancers, he doesn't have time to play them. And you still get those right of oblivions that are super juicy. And with Brights you can sacrifice a creature and either you draw a card for every single token or your you know your opponent just sacrifices his good creatures to your 1-1 one, one tokens and that's glorious. And yeah, the second plan is Touch of the Spirit Realm. We only have two. They work perfectly with the Paragon. They are permanent, so if you for example remove token with this, you still get empty Touch of the Spirit Realm on board. It doesn't do anything, but it's a permanent. You can sacrifice it to Rite of Oblivion for free removal, basically. And, you know, uh, it has also the second thing that is a flicker ability channel for two mana. And guess what? When this gets flickered, it comes back as a 7-5. You will see it today in the games. And let me tell you, soldiers uh, have some issues by, you know, with handing a 7-5 fly flinker menace. So this is the deck. And by the way, full credit for the deck goes to some person named Muffy online. Uh, this was his uh, deck in some tournament I know nothing about, but I really like it. I think you guys might not see this one deck because it's not very popular, to be honest. And I really enjoyed it. I think it's glorious, I think it's fun, I think it's a good way to start new year with something fresh and interesting. So if you appreciate it, if you appreciate even the late upload, but we ain't skipping a day. Uh, since nearly like 8 or 9 months by the way. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, I really appreciate it, and let's start new year with, you know, extra power. And enjoy the games, I really think they were all epic, and uh, I think you will, you will have a lot of fun with those. So let's go! Alright, we are going first with Resolute Reinforcements and full curve uh, since, two turns, uh, since turn 2, so I think that's pretty nice opening. Yeah, it will be so, so hard to outvalue us, even for this, wow, I didn't see this one ever in my life. Mountain into Swiftblade? What a crazy thing. Let's see how he plays, if he plays something that is not, like he does not expect the reinforcements. Alright, I want to click it fast so he doesn't see we have priority. Uh, please tap mana, because then I can tap, yes, oh. Oh no. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to block the Swift Blade, but it, it got pumped with the play with fire. Uh, he wants to push the damage, and honestly, it's probably good. It also fixes his next draw. Yeah, we need to take this one. We're sure that we should be able to, you know, do the thing. 
To be perfectly honest with you guys, if I played really really well, I should have played it in the end step, not during the combat phase. And you can say there is no difference. Uh, we actually show that we can ambush and some player might miss it. So you don't lose anything because like he was tapped out, so there is no difference. But you make it a bit harder to see the ambush. Or your opponent can think that, hey, maybe he doesn't know that he can ambush. So, you know, very like zero downsides and very, very little upside. But still, it, it is right there. All right, the next turn is sure that... I think we go for it, right? We need we have two turns until the flip. I think that's quite long. Alright, double swamp. We don't want to pay life, so Cave of Corios is not really what we need. We need one more turn, guys, before we flip. And this is crucial turn. He needs exactly two burn spells to kill Shordet. If he doesn't kill Shordet, he won't win this game, I think. Let's see, let's see. This oh no, stop. Stop touching my Oh, okay, this is the only card that goes one for one, and that's not a coincidence, they play this specifically against Shordat, because literally of what I said, we take the damage, we lost a lot of value right now, but we will have something something in the air, we also have a buff, you know what, that's not bad, we definitely need to start blocking as soon as possible, we do not take the value. We do not take a card, we take the final Anthem when we waited so long for this Anthem effect. But right now, our board is strong, but our op I, I kinda like this version that he's running. It's really strong, like long-term value version. The answer sure that it gives value. It is super awkward for us to play against, like honestly. Alright, alright, alright. How can he block? He can sacrifice something or just lose Jaya. Jaya is so hard to deal with. She's ac she, she actually is. I'm not sure how to do this thing. I think we attack with what? Three. Because this is something he can keep sacrificing every single turn. Then we take extra damage because we cannot block the cheeks. That kinda sucks, but we have to answer Jaya. Oh man, but we cannot. Alright, we have Rosalus Rainf. I, I, okay, I, I think I know how to play this. This is four, so we need to hit one more. Unfortunately, we need to go really all in. And it means he does not block and he gets a very nice lethal turn. But we still have to do it. Jaya is just way too fret. She draws him cards. Guys, two extra cards. It means burn spell to the face. So like we, we get burned more if we if we don't kill Jaya. He cannot block, there's nothing to think about. However, we have Resurrect Reinforcements times two. So on board, we do not die to anything. We need to play it on our turn though. So that's really something to remember. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I don't care about the cards right now. Mm, I want sure that's so bad. We need to stabilize. We will be so short on life. This helps us to draw, but we get way too much damage. He might have something with haste. Uh, did we play around? All right. Oh no, never mind. Never mind. I think this is the right play. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe this was the turn when we gamble and we just build for the later game. Because we might stabilize this turn, but maybe we just uh, lose later because he got extra card that we enabled him by, you know, not doing too much aggressive stuff this turn. I'm not sure. And this is a hard choice, but if he attacks with everything on ground as well... Right now, look, he has really good traits and he wants to go all in. You always wait until he taps. And this, this is what, what we meant. If we didn't have this card, we could not afford this kind of super aggressive attack. But we have it. And... Thanks to this, we will get quite a lot of good traits. I mean, all the good traits. It also gets rid of his land, so that helps us a little bit as well. Alright, this is the block. Best we can do. Two damage to the face. Next turn, Ser Sarah Paragon can start blocking the chicks, but you need to remember that they can come back at three creatures. Alright, this is not the worst. I Can I can I flicker? No, uh, artifact. Alright, alright. Oh man, those are some hard decisions, honestly. Uh, okay, I think I know. It should be this. It might look weird, but every damage counts and we can block only one creature with flying. Even if he has extra cheek and it will be bigger, we can still block with Sarah Paragon, so it's, it's the same. 
I would love to play a Gandra, but I think we need to stabilize. We need to actually start killing him. With Resolute Train. Yeah, we can play this and we need to go aggressively. We, I think we force the Leaf Arm next turn, right? Yeah. It's not perfect. I would prefer to keep everything to blocks, but we don't have much time. This deck just kills you sooner or later if you if you just let them. And suddenly, instead of just until he draws a burn spell, uh, now he has one turn. He needs to win this this turn, and that's much harder than to win, you know, inevitably. So that's why we had to be. And you see, thanks to this attack, he knew this is his last turn, and suddenly his creature cannot block, and it's not so good anymore. Alright, so if I had a dream about the perfect hand, I would not recognize this one from the dream. <laughs> That's one way to say it, right? Alright, so yeah, the taplands really... Oh no, we are against this crap again. Okay, this is probably the perfect draw, honestly, because this, this fixes one of our big issues. The second one being, I'm on the draw and I do not know solution for this problem. Alright, this is actually... So we will just double reinforcements we don't go for the dog so the difference between this and the wow well, i expected the resource reinforcements the difference between the dog and the reinforcements this gives you more value instantly and okay okay i actually need to stop talking because i need to make sure that he realizes that we still have an insta he wouldn't attack if he knew what we have it's not quite this one, because this is a card that can be replayed by Sarah Paragon later. This is a token that maybe survives for the next 20 turns and we don't get value, you know? Alright. I, I, I was so bamboozled. Why can I, cannot I play this? <laughs> okay, I, I guess there was a reason. Flash Gorger. If they answer it, uh, they lose the turn. And they are not incentivized to play a removal spell. So Brutal Qatar, it still hurts them. And we can write off Oblivion it, and he needs a bru another Brutal Qatar. So, like, it's, it's a good play. It's really awkward for him. And going back to the play, uh, this in, in, is instant value. You don't get any card draw, but thanks to this you get more out of this card. Uh, until you don't have any cards to play, this doesn't really do anything. Like, it gives you turn 7 play, basically. And give, this gives you instant reward. So that's why you want to play this one, because it's extra creature compared to this one. And draw a card, uh, there is a small quality difference. Uh, on average, this will make your place a bit better during next turns, but it's not a big difference and very often it literally won't make any difference because you still play a wedding announcement or you still play a resort. Oh, uh, is he rage quitting already? Man, you are a Pope and from space. You need to have some standards, man. You cannot rope everyone that keeps actually playing creatures. Like, th this is my line of thinking. If you rage quit this kind of situation, maybe... Like, I don't know. I don't know. He seems to be playing, but it's so weird. Alright. So we will definitely attack. There is a chance for resolute reinforcements. And I will actually take this trade. Because I kill Talia, I kill this, and then I play the wedding announcement. He really should have this card. He has full hand of something. So very possibly he just had full I, I will play the dock right now because it might enable us to play also this. If we draw land, we did not. But <laughs> oh, oh, we can do the thing. Like we are at twenty-one. We honestly don't care. His board is way less, way too little threatening for us. We can just basically ignore it. This is the first big card that is relevant. Let's see the counter. Good choice. Good choice. Uh, I wonder if he attacks. All right, that's an interesting one. That's an interesting one. This is an, is an instant, right? Return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So we can cast it during his turn. I would really want the, the second land. This is important. If we mess this, this turn, we actually might fall behind. I think we flip. I think we flip. We lose on the board though, in this case. That's a, that's a hard choice. That's a hard choice. So we can try to attack. This has first sight, so we cannot block it. I think I do it. 
Uh, this is not a good a good play, unless he went he goes with the damage. And this was my hope. So this was very bad play, unless he doesn't block. And that then it's free damage and free rifling, uh, because we would have to flicker when he declares Talia blocker. And I hoped he won't. Now he will attack because he thinks his creatures are bigger. He thinks that he's winning the race because he thinks he's a, against 3-3 three, three lifelinker. What he doesn't know is that we will kill one of his creatures that are attacking. We will also... Okay, we won't because it comes back and dance them. <laughs> okay, <laughs> never mind. But he deals 9 damage. And we can deal more than 9. We take the damage. If we block, we block later. And now we live think for seven, and this is something he did not expect. He actually did not expect it at all. And that's that's pretty epic play. The fact that this is just you know by the way play, our deck is not even designed to do this, is pretty darn cool. We could get rid of Talia or the Siege Veteran. I think this is the play. Unless we go for the creature and try to surprise him with this next turn, because if he... No, 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 we have Dash of the Spirit Realm, so we can make surprise anyway. Alright, and I sacrifice... I cannot go... It should be Doggo, but I'm not sacrificing a dog. I'm sorry. I prefer to lose the game, okay? I have my my standards. <laughs> the, the care about your dog standards. Alright, so... He is at 7, he dies next turn, we are at 20 against Agro, I just realized, man, it was the same as he never attacked us once during this whole game, which is pretty insane. By the way, we would win this so much harder if we actually drew a land. Sure, enjoy your I don't care damage. So, what's going on with your life total, my friend? A Ganjo does not work. Sure, show me. Show me. He needs resolute reinforcements into double block. Or, okay. And I will make a stop for just to be sure. We flicker the token. And my friend, enjoy. <laughs> oh, madness, hers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was that was amazing. It feels great, especially that we're on the draw, I think, against Talia. We don't care. All right, so what do we have here? Uh, definitely my favorite turn one land in the in the history of Magic. So let's get rid of it. I don't think we get flooded with a gun or all this stuff. We have enough value. I'm so happy our opponent is not playing stuff every turn. All right, uh, as, as before, I'm not sure which, which game will be first, but generally you always want to go for reinforcements. It also shows that you have a counter spell, which is a bit, you know, a different, different thing basically. I'm not sure how we will play it out. Uh, I went for this one because more creatures mean Liam and Invoke the Spell are bad, so we want to just spam the board basically. Alright, I think it's worth it, right? Oh, I want my stuff so bad. Do I take... No, we cannot fall behind. We cannot fall behind. And we can pay this. We want something in the graveyard, even if it means another trespasser. This sucks, but a ganjo will give us the land. It will be awkward next turn, though. So I'm not 100% sure if that was correct decision, because we might not want to cast a ganjo next turn, and we are kind of forced to. So, you know... We will see, we will see. Fortunate, pure skill. Out, my, my skill out of the top of library. Always <laughs> good skill to have in magic. Alright, alright, companion. Like, playing double companion really helps with the whole board thing. Maybe I should play Rite of Oblivion. I actually did not notice it uh, until it was too late, but I think it's still fine. It's still fine. I think we are in a good spot. Rite of Oblivion will give us so much value during this game. And a Gandro together with Spellstinger. Alright, you got your bro. That's an interest. So he wants to trade. Yeah, that's smart. He knows we are forced to... If he uses cut down, that's fine. We will block anyway as a charm blocker. So the, the idea is that he wanted this in the graveyard. Now Rite of Oblivion will never hit it. That's really smart, and we were forced to do it, do it, or we give him the card. 
However, 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 however. I hope he doesn't answer with the cut down. Alright. Don't answer. He can actually mess our play on this moment. And now it's too late because you cannot answer to per to Lance. It doesn't give your opponent priority and we can sacrifice as part of the cost. So now cut down cannot prevent it. It's still not great, but you know what? If he activates Tenacious Underdog, it means his board is zero. So he doesn't really want to do it. Interesting choice. He knows we have Right of Oblivion. And you know what? He also should know that we have stuff that we can use this turn. Like, we have stuff to, to sacrifice. I will take the Spirited Companion. I don't mind the damage if that gives me advantage. That's what life is, right? A buffer for your spells. <laughs> don't quote me on this one. And... A Ganjo proving its value and uh, as I mentioned like look at the value that we get from all those rights of Oblivion and now he also sees that the next card he plays will still be uh, killed with right of Oblivion. Uh, Invoke Despair is always best play of the year. So let's see if he has Swamp into Despair. Puppeteer, one of the cool cards but not very used and this definitely won't help his him this turn. Guys, we are actually overwhelming him so hard right now. I will go with this one. And the flashback. Do I have good cards? Yeah, I have everything in the graveyard. So, we target this one. We suck... I don't know. It's probably reinforcement would be the better one, but... I don't... I honestly think it's too little of a difference to, to care. And as you can see, we, we have still so much removal in the hand, and the architect will start doing... Uh, amazing work and don't forget invoke actually gets nullified really really hard right now let's see what survives uh, he didn't play the underdog so he definitely has something uh, if he had removal that is a huge mistake he gave us free creature and in this kind of day this means extra removal so that was a big big mistake there was no reason to play like this uh, but we all are sloppy sometimes so you know I'm the last person to mention mistakes. I'm not reading cards lately and I will do better job at it. So we can make jokes about mono red, right? Everyone likes those kinds of jokes. Actually, I've seen some mono blue jokes and they were amazing as well. All right, back on the topic. I want to draw my cards. Mono black is not known for be the best sweepers in format, you know? So for this reason, I'm not scared to go white. Path of Parrier, okay, cut down. Well, it is what it is, probably the most efficient, but we still got extra cars and with Flash Gorger, like his life is threatened and he doesn't really want to play Underdog, like it's the desperation play and this is the beautiful part about this deck, a creature, an enchantment, enjoy your one card for five mana my friend, <laughs> that was best play of his whole deck, it wasn't as glorious and as usual, wasn't it? And now let's go for the Worm, which is protected against Sacrifice Effect, because we have great dogs that are just our protectors. This 2-drop is basically the most heroic creature you will ever see in Magic. Yeah, so we it protects against Invoke Despair as well. Sure. This is not something that will, will win you. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. However, uh, if he makes the Vampire, which is usually what they do, uh, it's not really a big deal for us. I don't want to get rid of the... Yeah, yeah, whatever. You know what I mean. Let's go like this. I could also exile it. I could use the touch of the spear. Whatever. Uh, this is the play. Two turns, my friend. And after this hit, he cannot target the Flash Gorger because he cannot pay 7 life. So this has Hexproof right now. And Hexproof is pretty good ability. As you probably... Ah, oh, but invoke the spur, bro. Invoke the spur. You know what? Okay, 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 okay. okay. I, I got the idea. I know how we do it. What he doesn't know. What he doesn't know is that we can flicker our only creature. So yeah, he will draw extra card if he has invoked the spur or Liliana. But it means he cannot do the same thing if he has invoked the spur. He would not win, and he doesn't know it. 
because we just flicker in response, our board is empty, he draws two, three cards, deals six damage, and then we get the worm that kills him. Sure. And we do not want to kill it even. We cannot, but if we could, we don't want to kill him unless then step, because at then step most of his cards cannot be played, so he doesn't get any benefit out of this card. And now the explosion will commence. Man, that was pretty glorious game. Boom. Kaboom. Nice. <laughs> Nar nearly. Like, uh, one second earlier, but it was close enough. Alright, going first. This is an interesting one. I have an idea how to play it differently than you might think. Because it's risky to give him full information about the crown and reinforcements. We will see what we play against. Of course, how could I think it's not Swift Blade after playing a mountain? Like you know, the basically the ultimate MTG skill right now. Um, we we need to play both, so at this this just gives more value. If he taps out fully, we get free Swift Spear. We, uh, I don't like it. Like it's a good play by him, and now we cannot really block. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I hope he burns my face. If we can uh, play the crown and equip, alright, so it is uh, like play with fire or lightning strike. It means that whatever we equip with the crown will die before we draw a card. So that's, you know, it is what it is. For this reason, maybe we go for right. Yeah, I think it's better. He cannot answer it because it's an instant. He might kill the, the, the last creature, but he doesn't get the you know, buff benefit. We don't have creatures, probably. That's that's rough. By the way, I didn't see... Wow! What's going... Oh, man, so... I need to have those. Man, I'm such a victim for all this crap. Like... Okay, it, it felt like 200 cards for a moment. I just had to check the num. Man, it's so free... Like, it looks weird, but it's also funny. Like... <laughs> like a puppet. Does it, it? Man, I have so much fun in Magic right now. You know, just by animating sleeves. Oh, there's also a game when we are smart by some werewolves. Amazing. Perfect. My best day in life. We want to play main phase, of course. And, you know, this is also the only removal. Uh, sacrifice an unarmed permanent. In the, like, last resort, we can actually sacrifice the crown. Problem is that with this crown, every creature we draw is cards. A lot of cards. So this is rough. Is there a land? I hope not. If there's no land for next two turns, whatever. Like, of course, they have one. Like, they have whatever they need. You need cargo? Great. You need removal? Great. You have a werewolf? Right, you have it. All right, sure, that is a big deal. All right, all right. Sure, that is possibly something that we can flip the game with. It will be close though. The point is that I don't want to block with Shardet. I really don't. Because it gives him one, like basically one card less to kill her. So yeah, you trade for a two drop, but you lost your best card in the deck basically. So you generally want to take the hits. If he activates the Foundry, it means that uh, he cannot lightning strike unless he plays the land and he's smart. So we cannot play around it. All right, so far he's going into late game and not for now. Alright, like this is close. It can go both ways. I think we are at disadvantage right now. I like I predict our win rate at like 40% right now, but it's still very very likely that we indeed will win. This is rough. We need to kill this before it flips. And we don't have great permanence to sacrifice, so in the worst case we actually might sacrifice shorted as long as we have enough mana on the same turn that we can start replaying stuff. This is really bad. This extra damage and extra creature and extra counter and extra creature in two turns is really rough. Oh man, this is not great. Do I want to go for the crown? Uh, we Don't forget, we can get rid of it or flip it at instant speed if it is about uh, to flip. And Kumano is still not here for the next turn. Yeah, I will pay this. If Charlotte dies on good terms, it's not the worst. And honestly, there is a high chance we just kill uh, Charlotte on the next turn. 
Like we are slowly stabilizing, but our opponent, like I needed him to slow down and he instead went even harder. So we are on the verge of stabilizing, but we need just this small tempo break from him because it, it ramps creature like Kumano. Egg, everything is just piling on us and we need to answer all of this. I don't like efficient plays right now, but fortunately we, we are starting to heal a little bit. So those Kumana are basically nullified by Shorded. Oh my god, bro, chill the... Chill the out. <laughs> uh, it's fine, we, can, we have ways to deal with it. One of the cool things about the Exile effect. Alright, alright, alright. This draw is extremely important. This is not the perfect draw. Uh, it's a good draw, but it's very slow. Oh man, that's awkward! Everything about this whole thing is so awkward. Even my commentary. <laughs> Alright, so I want to use it so much, but we cannot be left with no board. Wedding announcement is great if it created a token during our turn so we can write off Oblivion on it. But now we actually need to wait full turn without answering anything. And our opponent is pushing so hardcore that we don't have a break. And now if he kills Shorded, we don't get the thing because it doesn't die, it gets exiled. So yeah, not exactly perfect. We need creatures! We need think we, we need like something like resort reinforcements so we can just start writing of oblivion. Like we have the answers, but we cannot activate them. If I sacrifice touch of the spirit realms, like he gets a big crit oh no. So it has come to this. The smork will commence. We know you will smork. Man, this one freaking counter. Uh, so happy it, does, it doesn't go on all of those. But it's still 8 damage to the face if he attacks with everything. But we can nullify something. And he is tapped out, so we know we won't lose shoulder after blocking. So I think it's a correct decision from him. Kumano is tempting because you basically get one extra damage for the ability to draw cards, but if he could kill sure that he would do so before. He would also probably attack before, just to force the block and kill sure that so I think he doesn't have way to... Ar oh, that was so smart. He, he actually could have played with fire and get rid of sure that. Alright, this is the card we needed. Is this too late? Is this too late? Is this too late? Is my question. What is the most threatening card right now? Oh man, this is actually a really hard, really hard call. I can invest into next turn, so I can equip this to reinforcements. Use Rite of Oblivion and go one for one, but next turn will hurt. Or I can just go Wedding Announcement and make sure that my next turn will be much, much better. And I think this is the right call. We cannot attack him, it's too early. We need... We, this this was the big turn. This is the stabilization turn. If he doesn't kill us in this turn, and we don't lose too much stuff... Man, man, it's so much stuff. Oh, stop playing stuff, bro. You have so much stuff. I don't have so much stuff. I, I feel the, the balance of stuff is not here. Yeah, the orange button. It's always there lurking so th this was what i was so t t talking about we need to sacrifice a lot on this turn i mean a lot those have trample probably we need to do something like this it's six damage eight damage we go to three honestly we cannot afford it man we kill only one creature that sucks do we do we bet and everything we we draw a creature is this possible oh man whatever we can block next turn we can block next turn but i, I want to stress out it's oh we have to go like this this way we actually gain some benefit for the next turn but oh uh, he he like we could afford to stabilize the game after his insane openings but we have triple right of oblivion and no creatures you know what? It is what it is. 
Smirk. That that is bamboozling. I don't think we can draw enough removal to make it work. So so going oh that's a nice block for us. Our opponent is actually playing really smart. He knows the only way he loses the game is if we somehow kill him. Let's draw some cards. Maybe there is a miracle right there. I'm drawing only one card. Man, I need more. So we can remove quite a lot, but not everything. Oh man, we can go, yeah, to damage. Uh, our opponent played this really well. He, he he seems to be a really good player. He he did everything right, I think. Yeah, I will actually pass the turn. Give him the refile. I think it's it's important to promote good players. So let's pass the turn. Eat our loss with dignity and not block. And give him some satisfaction. No blocks. Enjoy, my friend. Good game. Well played. Uh, so we were doing it nearly, but he just had too much value every single turn. He didn't whiff, and we, we just got overwhelmed. He, he had too, too good of a draw compared to us.